How's it going, doggy people? I hope you all are doing well. Uh, this has been in my list of something I wanted to cover for uh, you know quite a while, um, but it's just gotten pushed down with all the other videos. So, seeing this of the Fenrir dog training, uh, positive only dog training versus balanced dog training. So, he's not saying purely positive, but the positive only is not necessarily what it is called. It is um, force free or just positive reinforcement. You know, we're, we. As a person who uses positive reinforcement, I am very well aware I cannot only use positive reinforcement. It is impossible to. The environment, human error, um, everybody makes mistakes. We're humans, right? Uh, we cannot only make every situation with a dog positive. But our goal is to not use balanced, and I say that with quotation marks because nothing about these balanced people are balanced. You know, it's mostly, in my opinion, compulsion. Um, but we don't use intentional punishment, force, fear. We don't. I don't use slip leads or or choke chains or any choke collar of any sort. Uh, you know, I don't use prong collars or e collars or any of that. I don't use any you know intentional corrections like that. I mean, the most that I will use is very light leash pressure, and it's on a harness. So we're gonna see what he has to say. We're gonna see what Mister. Fenrir has to say um, about this. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you are new here, very quickly, my name's Will Atherton. I'm a canine behaviorist, and I am... Now, that's the first thing that always bothers me. He says, he claims he's a canine behaviorist. I do not believe him, for one, because no canine behaviorist would ever use the tools that he uses. They don't use a slip lead. They don't use, you know, force or pops or anything like that. They would never call themselves a balanced dog trainer. And I don't know if it's the same in the UK or or Europe or whatnot, if you are required to have an actual degree in animal, uh, to become an animal behaviorist in the States, you have at least a master's degree in you know animal science and, and you have a degree to be a behaviorist, a master's degree. You can have additional degrees such as a doctorate you know you can be a you know phd um you can be a veterinary behaviorist you can be a and just a simple animal behaviorist which is nothing simple about it but there's lots of schooling and education and when people say this in america it would be considered fraud so not only are you lying but it is fraud and punishable i assume by law i don't know if it's the same way in the UK, I'm not going to claim to know anything about that. I will try to do some research on my own for my own sake. But the fact that so many people call themselves a behaviorist bothers me to no end. It's like if if I just go around telling people I'm a doctor. Yeah, call me Dr. Tay. Yeah, or if I called myself a behaviorist. People would believe it because there's no, you know, people. <laughs> clearly, you look at me and you're like, okay, well, you don't know anything about anything being a doctor, right? But because there's no... There's no requirements for licensing in the animal world. Anyone can call themselves behaviorist. People have called me behaviorist, and I always correct them. And I say, no, I am a dog trainer. I am certified. I'm a certified dog trainer, but I am not a behaviorist. And I always let them know. And I always try to educate people so that they know just because someone says that doesn't mean anything. You know, I refer clients that I cannot help to animal behaviorists. Two dogs in particular... I talk about this a lot on my channel. I've talked about this before on my channel that with two dogs before that I could not help that were absolutely out of my, because they had far more behavioral trauma than I was equipped to help um, and deal with, I, re I referred them to an animal behaviorist um, who is able to possibly diagnose certain uh, health issues as well as possibly uh, prescribe medicine, you know, medications or anti-anxieties uh, for a short period while working with that animal behaviorist who is trained to train dogs in a very specific way, um, you know, in a, a very detailed way and, and all that. So there's there's cases where, hey, if I feel like I cannot help you, um, I will absolutely refer you to the top of the top. So it just really bothers me to no end when people just straight up lie. I'm not saying he's necessarily lying. But I've all the research I've done on him, I can't see any, any actual licensing or titles other than him telling, telling him, other than him calling himself a behaviorist. 
I'm the founder of the fastest growing canine company in the world, Fenrir Canine Leaders. But this... Is that true? I mean, if so, good for you. I don't care. I don't care if, if you had... If you only had a dozen clients or a dozen students or whatever, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that it's the fastest growing whatever. And even if it is, who cares? I still don't. I mean, that compared to your, this is all fluff compared to how you actually train. I don't think that you're actually still a good trainer channel is dedicated to equipping and empowering you to be able to pursue your dreams of working as a canine professional and making a wonderful living for slip you lead. and your family. The dog has a harness but you're using your slip lead. In the process. But today we're going to dive into the topic around positive only training versus balance. Positive reinforcement which is not positive only. Force free. Nobody respective worth their salt calls it positive only training and then therefore which one should you be pursuing now ask and with balance there's nothing balanced about it there's it's not don't try to use it something like a nice term it's not balanced you know you use people say you i use 95 percent you know positive reinforcement and five percent correction now i think it's the other way around use 95 percent correction and maybe five percent treats or positive reinforcement that's not balanced Good grief, people. 10 different people for a definition of each training method, and you're probably gonna get 10 slightly different answers. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what I believe the different types of training. So that's your opinion, just like my opinion. It doesn't make it fact. It doesn't make it anything else. You, know, you're, you have your bias, I have my bias, but I also have, my bias is to, to, I speak from experience. I called myself a balanced trainer for six years out of the eight years I've been training. Although I didn't ever use prong collars, slip leads, or choke chains, or, or any of the, the, the aversives, I still just call myself that because I used leash pressure on a harness. If you, I'll leave a video of how I walk my dog in the video below to show you what I mean when I'm referring to leash pressure. That's why I called myself balanced. But, so, but in this whole time, you know, I've really just been... A force free trainer or, or at the very least a positive reinforcement trainer or what you know just a trainer i mean labels are, are whatever but i was holding myself as accountable as possible and then these people are going to be like oh no i'm balanced i'm this and that blah 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 you know it's just so irritating and the fact that they constantly try to manipulate you and say you know like again he has his definition there is the definition and then there is your definition and there's my definition and then there's, there's just, there's just the fact, you know, like I work to benefit the dog. Slip leads don't benefit them. They benefit the human. Prong collars don't benefit the dog. They benefit the human. You're just using force. You're using pain compliance. That's all it is. Actually are. So starting with positive only training. Positive reinforcement, not positive only. Positive only is a training method. Positive reinforcement. Method. I'm always going to correct him when he says that which already tells me he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. ...dology and principle that utilizes only positive reinforcement style training. And we try, I will say I try to use positive, but I'm aware and I do use negative punishment, which means I remove something to as a way to correct a dog, meaning correct, I remove something the dog likes, like a treat. If a dog is jumping and I have a treat too too low, then I remove my hand. I say, okay, I need to work on my timing, my body language. I need to uh, set the dog up for a, you know, a, a different, in a different scenario so that they can offer the behavior that I can reward and reinforce more often. If I'm have to, if I constantly have to correct you know, like pull a treat away when a dog is jumping, then I'm working too fast. I need to change the environment because my goal is to be able to reward the dog consistently without them even feeling the need to jump. So I change, I don't put it on the dog to change. Positive reinforcement is one of four areas of operant conditioning, blah, 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 which blah, blah, is how blah, blah, dogs blah. learn. So positive- Yeah, everybody learns. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that, yes, you can use the other quadrants, but they're not necessary to get the same results. You don't have to use the other two quadrants. I mean, technically you don't have to use the other three where you can you know, use positive, but again, we're not robots, we're humans. So you don't have to use punishment or negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement is I remove something unpleasant 
to increase the behavior. So if I want a dog, so if I want a dog to sit, I pull up on their slip lead or their prong collar, and as soon as they sit, I remove that pressure. I mean, I don't. That's just that's what you would do, and it's unnecessary. If I can get the dog, if I can capture a sit, if I can lure them into a sit, if I can use a ball and just wait it out and they sit, and then I can throw it. The advocates will preach that you should never correct a dog. You should never use any forms of punishment for a yeah, dog. And the way to, to train a dog is to use positive reinforcement. Right. So using lots of food work and toy work. Now also, there's real life consequences. My dog has been punished before, but it's not with... It has been with prong collars and choke chains. And I always talk about that um, whenever talking about my Sheba's past, that I was trained by stupid, idiotic, dangerous trainers that told me that I needed to use these tools on him. Um, I didn't know. I trusted them, even though it went against my gut. But you know what? I learned. I learned and I changed what I did. So yes, he's been corrected with that. And it, it made it worse for my Shiva. So now if I need to correct him, it's very slight leash pressure. Or I can raise my voice. I'm not perfect. I will say I'm a lot nicer and a lot more fair with client's dogs than I am with my own. But look, we're human. I mean, my dog does not cower. He's he do, he's not afraid of me. You know, I don't put hands on him. I'm not constantly yelling at him. He he just gives me the middle finger. You know, I mean, we have been through it all. So I'm not automatically getting mad at at regular owners who. I'm not getting on the case of regular owners who like raise their voice or correct their dog. It, it happens. As long as you can really try to fix it and make sure that your dog is not being traumatized by your corrections or that your your dog is not shutting down from corrections or that you're not constantly having to correct your dog for a behavior especially in a human world you got to put yourself in your dog's shoes work to help your dog understand what it is that you want from them now balance training is a different methodology that uses all four areas of operant conditioning one of which being positive reinforcement so balance trainers are in essence positive only trainers but no then they are you're all... not not at all don't even try don't even try in essence you're force free you're positive reinforcement bullshit dude you're not you would be if you only if you practiced positive reinforcement and you know the occasional negative punishment, which is again removing something as a way to correct the dog. Um, it, but a negative punishment, removing a treat, is not the same as popping on a prong collar, pulling up on a slip lead. It's not the same. Okay, don't even try to call yourself the same as them because you you don't practice. You don't have the skills because you don't have the skills because you haven't practiced trying to avoid using crutches and tools and things that make it easier to train a dog. It's easy to use correction. It's easy to put a prong collar on and stop a dog from pulling. It takes skill to teach a dog without relying on anything other than just using their harness. So, utilizing negative reinforcement, positive never punishment, and negative never punishment. Never necessary. Now, positive punishment is if you add something to it where if, if, positive punishment is if you ask your dog to sit and they don't sit, you pop them with a prong collar. And then they sit. It, you add a punishment to it. They don't need that. Positive only as a style. Positive reinforcement, not positive only. This is an adorable little dog. And I didn't know they made harnesses this small for little potatoes. They're so cute. The of training is superb nice harness, when it. it comes to teaching your dog a new behavior. Yeah, which... they say like, oh, no, this is great for teaching tricks and blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't work for, for you know, behavior modification then why do behaviorists exist they only use they, they only use these these methods they don't ever rely on aversives because they're smarter than you because they know that that makes behavior worse i mean like it's just it's common sense people when we understand the theories oh and principles God. of you do little floppy ears. conditioning is exactly what positive reinforcement is designed to achieve. By positive, we mean adding something into the equation. And by reinforcement, we mean to see a behavior happen more frequently. So if you're trying to teach your dog something new, it is a wonderful principle. It is a wonderful method. It's also a wonderful principle for teaching behavior modification. I know this because I've worked with many, 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 many aggressive, reactive fearful dogs whatever you want to label them as dogs that have had a bite history dogs that have had one or two bites where they actually punctured the skin and one dog that had eight bites where she would run down the street to make contact and bit through a gentleman's back pocket bit through his leather wallet and still left a bruise 
on his thigh. And I didn't use any of his methods or anything like that or any special tools, just a harness, a basket muzzle, because yes, I was not about to go anywhere near that dog without a basket muzzle on. And we were able to use pause reinforcement and it took time and we got her to be safe. Methodology for teaching a dog a new behavior. In around eight lessons with like one lesson a week. Yeah, and it can also be done really fun, and it can be an excellent way to build relationship between you and your dog. So if positive only is such a wonderful principle and methodology for dog training, then why do I consider myself a balanced trainer? And yes, as a balanced trainer, I am somebody that uses corrections and punishments ouch, in my Colin. training and behavior ouch, work. Well, ouch. that's because positive only. Now he's having her set up to where he jumps. You don't need this. You could simply just have her, if you have a six foot leash, have her stand seven feet away or eight feet away. The dog is standing there, reward. You can reward or she can reward. She gets close to seven feet, he tries to jump, she backs up. He still doesn't make any contact with her. Or you can have a little gate or a fence and she and the dog is running free. She walks up to the fence, the dog jumps on, you know, on the back feet, she walks away. The dog is on four feet, she comes back up. The dog jumps, she walks away. That's a, way, that's a punishment, but it's not like this prong collar. He does this because he doesn't have the skills to do it without it, or he doesn't have the patience to do it without it, or because it's just easier. I'm not saying this doesn't work. They always try to throw it and say that, that, that positive reinforcement people will say that, you know, oh, it doesn't work. No, it works. Everybody knows it works. We're saying it's not necessary. Yes, it's excellent. I'm saying it's not Encouraging and like, poor thing. Training I mean, yeah, new behaviors, like, but it is very... He's not you know, traumatized, but his head is low. He's not comfortable. It hurt. He used correction spray, pet corrector, which is just a hissing noise. And she's probably just like delighted. Very poor at discouraging existing behaviors. Now that's kind of fancy terms and punishment in my training and behavior pet work. Correct. Well, that's because positive pet only, correct. yes, it's excellent. He got two corrections there, the prong collar, yanking, and the pet corrector. Excellent at encouraging and training new behaviors, but it is very, very poor at discouraging existing behaviors. That now is actually just a blatant lie or ignorance on his part. Positive reinforcement training is so effective. In fact, more effective in my opinion and from my experience and probably even scientific data, more effective than using corrections because it lasts longer, because you don't have to rely on a prong collar on a dog. You don't rely on a tool. You rely on using the dog's brain and teaching them through actual communication, not just communication through a metal prong collar, an electric shock collar, or a slip lead, or the, the threat of a correction. It is far more beneficial to the dog and the human, and you learn, you develop a better bond, and this is not just me being biased. I mean, this is experience. And I've done it both ways, people. So I think I have a little bit of a ledge to stand on, even if it's just a pebble. I, I, I know that you get a lot further with now positive kind than of... you do with negative. Either way, it's unnecessary. So what if it takes a little longer? The dog isn't getting hurt. You're a better trainer. You're a better owner for it fancier terminology for getting bad behaviors to stop or getting good behaviors to increase. So You're just an idiot. You haven't done it. You haven't done the positive reinforcement. You, you couldn't teach this dog, this Mastiff over here. Gorgeous dog, by the way. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of, of the Mastiffs, but they, I mean, any dog is cute. They're stinking cute. I just couldn't do with all the drooliness, but he's stinking cute. And I have no doubt his owner loves him. And I have no doubt that the trainers think that they're helping because they want to help. But in the end, the dog doesn't care. The dog knows pain. The dog knows fear from this. And this dog is still probably going to jump. And I know it's a problem with a big dog, but you know what? He could not teach this guy without relying on this. A lot of times I'll have a dog this size even on a harness that clips in the back or on a regular <laughs> Adonis is sighing in the background. I love that little boy. Or I would have him on a, a, a wide flat buckle collar. Meaning Sorry, I keep hitting the button. I would have them on a wide flat buckle collar so it's comfortable. And I'm not using it to pop because I'm not, you know, I don't need something painful because I'm not trying to correct the dog. I'm just trying to hold the dog back. And if I can't, because it's a very large dog, very strong, then I'd have them behind a fence. I mean, I worked with this just yesterday with a German Shepherd that was probably 
95 to 100 pounds maybe gorgeous you know not even two years old super big jumper that's why i was there and so as soon as i got there she jumped okay no problem i would just when i you know i don't push the dog down because i don't want to get into a, a fight with the dog and i don't want them to see my hands as as toys and the owner was awesome he was already like hey i got her ball when people come in she jumps i tell them you know to tell her go find your ball she goes find your ball perfect redirection Get her attention off the, the people, the excitement, until she calms down. So I used her ball because I used treats, but that was a little too exciting for her. So I used her ball. So I took her ball, and when she thought about jumping, I would get it just before she jumped, and I would get her ball interested. Uh, I would get her interested in her ball, and I would toss it, and I would just roll it away, and she would go get her ball. She would come back, she would drop it, and then I would pick it up, wait a couple seconds of her just standing there, and then roll it. And then we went out in the yard. And she wanted to jump again, do the same thing with the ball, because we changed environment, come back in the house, she wants to jump again, do the same thing with the ball. And after a couple minutes, I mean, after, like, I was there for 45 minutes, you know, it was a 30-minute session, but I always talk, as you can tell. And she was fine, she was tired. We worked her mentally. I didn't have to touch her once. I wasn't about to. I, I didn't have the owner put her on a leash. I didn't have any of that. And you know what? She was fine. Like, I could walk around, I could, I could kneel down, and be at face level with her, which is really exciting for a dog. By the end, she wasn't jumping because I was able to reinforce and keep her body and her mind redirected that, hey, when I bend down, it's good. You, you get your ball tossed. If you jump, you don't get your ball tossed. But if you sit four on the floor, you get your ball tossed. You know, it's it's simple new behaviors but it is very very poor at just a straight up lie guarding. separation anxiety then positive only not only is it not designed to do that it is very poor at getting any results whatsoever so no, you're an idiot that is a straight up lie you are an idiot that using corrections with positive reinforcement or <laughs> that's not even the thing using corrections with separation anxiety only makes it worse the way he trains and believes and whatever the way he trains and bleeds and promotes is you are hiding the underlying behaviors. He puts a band-aid on things. Okay, he just stops the outright behavior. He doesn't stop the symptoms of it. Or I guess he stops the symptoms of barking and lunging and biting and trying to jump, but he doesn't stop the, the ultimate problem. Separation anxiety is a very tough thing to work on. And I've only ever used pause reinforcement with it i don't ever correct if a dog whines okay we need to let him out and put him in there for less time next time it takes time it's a process not an event if you you could put a shot collar on a dog you could put a bark collar on a dog i've had clients that i i quit working with because they would rather they were seeing two trainers at the same time actually that's why i quit you know they they saw me and they saw another trainer they were going to petco and all this and they're like well you know that my dog is in the he's a rescue of course and he's in a crate you know for like five hours a day while i'm at work and i come and blah 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 and like, we can't have him barking, you know, in the apartment. We're getting, you know, we're going to get evicted and blah, blah, blah. So they just put a bark collar on him. I said, okay, have a good day. Bye. I'm not working with that. I worked with them for over an hour and a half showing them how it's going to take time and this and that. And they just, just blatantly just ignored it and said, okay, well, we're just going to put a bark collar on. Okay, go ahead and do that. See how that works for you. That poor dog. I feel so bad for it. Well, this was years and years ago, but... <sighs> anyway, I'm getting too riled up. We'll, we'll see what else he has to say. I use other areas of operant conditioning that are that psychologically are proven and to work for fixing existing Ouch. bad behaviors. Seeing Sci did he say psychologically? Blah, blah, blah operant conditioning that are psychologically proven to work. Psychologically proven. Yeah, he uses the one finger because that's all you need because you have leverage and pain. It's a beautiful dog psychologically proven really okay yeah yeah you can psychologically cause learned helplessness in an animal you can cause pain and discomfort and force and yes the animal will work for you to avoid punishment or they can work for you because it's rewarding and yes it works quickly but again you're putting a band-aid on it you're causing pain fear dis discomfort pain compliance force on a dog. Not a lot of force. You don't need a lot of force with a tiny band around a big dog's neck. It's not necessary. Nobody's saying it doesn't work. It's not necessary. 
for fixing existing Ouch. bad behaviors. See, How about I put that around your neck and pop you? This dog is not comfortable with you Those in its bad face. bad behaviors yeah, wait, happen lip -lick. less frequently. So then does that mean that I would Ouch. encourage every Ouch. single one of you guys... Forcing the sit. I would just love to have these people on all fours at the height of a dog and have somebody really tall put a little slip lead around his neck and drag him around and see how he feels. You know, oh, is it is really you know, just that nice? It just irritates me to no end that trainers like this it just just straight up lie or manipulate or use their silver tongue or just are just straight up ignorant and because they want it to be so it's going to be so they want everybody to believe what they're believing look you don't have to believe me you don't have to follow me you don't have to do anything i say go follow anybody else you know zach george kiko pup uh grisha stewart uh victoria stillwell anybody else I mean, of course, I recommend positive reinforcement trainers. Go listen to, I mean, listen to him if you want to. I am trying to do this to give the dogs a voice because they can't tell you that this is rubbish. They can't tell you. And if they do, like in the dog daddy video I just did, um, which hopefully will be up before this one, the dog is telling you, I'm scared, but we just don't listen because we're, we're humans. We're ignorant. They're not so blind as those who refuse to see. And in the land of the blind, the man with one eye is king. It's to become a balanced trainer or a balanced canine behaviorist. You're, no, you cannot be a balanced canine behaviorist. It is impossible. I mean, maybe not like I'm just based on common sense. You cannot be a canine behaviorist, an animal behaviorist, and be balanced. Those, are, those two things do not work. That's like fire and water. You can't put them together. If you have a pot in between, I understand, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it is that you want to pursue. Now, like I say, it's no secret that I think that a balanced training principle is superior, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to behavior modification. But of course, because it's your bias. I've been here before. Like, it doesn't matter. You don't have to train the way he trains to see or the way I train to see. Oh, I love that this boxer has his tail. I mean, you know, over in the UK, like they, they, they ban docking and, and cropping and love to see a boxer with his tail um, and Roddy's too. But um, I know I'm, I'm you know, going down a bunch of rabbit holes, but <laughs> um, you don't have to use this to see common sense that this dog is not comfortable, that this is not necessary. Of course he thinks it's superior. He's an idiot. It, it, it works. Why should he try anything else? Why should he try to better himself? I try to better myself every day because of the dog. It's more work for me. I don't have as many clients, but I don't care. I'm here to benefit the dogs. I take the pay cut for the dog. I'm not out here making bank. I live paycheck to paycheck. I'm not out here with, you know, hundreds of clients. I drive hours to go see clients, and I'm happy to do it. I'm here to benefit the dog. And I can see through my own eyes, experience, common sense, and scientific proof that positive training, positive reinforcement is superior. That's my opinion. And I guess we'll end that there because I've been talking too much. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can tell, I'm not a fan of Will Atherton or his ignorance or blatant lies or you know if it is considered fraud calling himself an animal behaviorist i don't know what the laws are in in the uk or europe or england or wherever he may be stationed um it, it's just it's just ridiculous so hey from one one person's opinion to another um i'm not out here trying to to change trainers i'm trying to give the public you know a different point of view and i'm trying to speak out for the dog so hope you enjoyed this video uh, let me know what you think. Give all your loved ones, whether they're humans or animals or mammals or sea creatures or or weasels, like, uh, you know, Hermes, my ferret. Um, give them some loving. And until next time, stay positive.